Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Star Family Wisdom podcast. We're so glad you're here with us today. I'm Jenna Layden, the founder of Star Family Wisdom and a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market. Hello, everyone. Sinead Willihan here with Jenna as per usual as podcast co-host. Delighted to be here. So glad you're here with us as well. We really, really enjoy having you along. Yeah, Star Family Wisdom is a paradigm shifting podcast community and modern day mystery school for your spiritual and cosmic evolution. And today's episode is definitely getting pretty cosmic. We have Joan of Angels on and we're going to get into some some mysteries of the universe here with some conversation around her experiences related to ET contact, her experiences channeling angels and how she became Joan of Angels. Uh, She was a doctor of chiropractic for many years. She is also known as Joan uh, Hangarter and is someone who really did not seek out this role in her her current life, um, but she naturally evolved into it. And we, we talk to her all about that today. Yeah, she's really, she's really great at sort of um, describing colorfully, you know, engagingly for people, uh, because I think it's sometimes difficult for people to explain what this kind of esoteric experience is like, um, because unlike other guests that we have, who maybe are more on the research side or the academic side, you know, they have ease of facts and information to deliver. Joan is mostly speaking about her personal life experience and how that's led into the guidance and the counseling and the uh, support that she provides for people now, as well as hosting a couple of radio shows. And she's written a couple of books as well. So she's somebody who's really working hard in the field. She's really, she's been around for a long time. Um, she feels like, she seems to feel like this is her time, you know, she's coming to fruition now and is really fully embracing herself as Joan of Angels. And she also talked about how she was given that name. She didn't give yes. it to herself because she heard it and it was given to her. Yeah. Yeah. So she through that journey. Mm-hmm. Well, and kind of like us, you know, we've had these experiences where we've heard voices. <laughs> I'm saying it like that, right? Because anytime <laughs> someone says that, it's like, you hear voices, what? But we have this guidance that comes through and Joan talks about like her early experiences with that and this whole process of trusting the guidance and following the voices to get her to where she is today. And I know you had some of that early on in your childhood, Sinead, like you, and, and I, like, I don't remember much of that at all, but you've had some of those sorts of kind of, I guess, eye-opening, you know, experiences as a child that made you question and follow. Yeah. Yeah. And to kind of store it away. Like I was reflecting on this just recently, <clears throat> my own experiences, especially when I was I, I believe it was between 9 and 11, and you know, you know this, um, I got just a ton of really huge downloads that came with, uh, I wrote them all down as well, not at the time, but I remember yeah. them, um, that came with this massive energy and w- was like getting an electric shock in a way, right? So that that's incredibly impactful. There was nobody I could talk to about it. There was nobody I could even verbalize that to, because when you're a child, you don't really know how to do that. And so... Um, I was reflecting on that recently and, and in my mind, I was like a squirrel, you know, tucking away nuts for winter, <laughs> saving, saving the downloads for later because uh-huh. I knew that they were important. I knew that they were real. I did not doubt them ever. It came with this feeling of knowing that a lot of people talk about, but it was like storing it away for later, right? I didn't really know where to put that information at the time in my life. Whereas for Joan, it sounds a bit more like she was receiving perhaps more direct or more ongoing communication through these voices, like through actually talking to these beings that were around her. And then eventually she figures out who they are, that they're angels, that they're, uh, she's got a connection with Joan of Arc. She talks about that and how these beings come through to guide her. And then also how she's using that wisdom to help other people. I'm still getting there. Of course, Joan has a couple of decades on us. She's older and wiser than we are. She's been around for a bit longer, but Um, Yeah, it was really interesting hearing how she's made her way along her own path, her very much her own individual authentic path, and how she's come more and more into who she authentically is and has had less judgment about herself 
um, as a result, right? She, she fully realizes that she can, she's free right now, right here, regardless of what anybody else thinks or says to live as she truly is. And I think that's just a wonderful example for anyone, regardless of your age. I know. And she helps people with that. She does coaching and classes and helps people step into their uniqueness and own their uniqueness, you know, just like we do here at Star Family Wisdom. And it, and that's so important, right? Because so many people are like caught between this idea of who they think they're supposed to be and this other version of them that they kind of feel more pulled to. And, and that's a hard thing to navigate. And so having someone like her in your life to be that example of, you know, just owning, like owning what might seem weird to other people, owning what has happened, right? What you have experienced and integrating that into your life in a way where, yeah, she can just be herself and, um, and have fun with it. And, and if you haven't seen her on, uh, Portal to Ascension or, you know, some of these other um, websites, shows, workshops. She does lots of hosting and emceeing. And I think you'll see, you know, in the conversation, her her personality is just fun to, you know, she's vibrant. She, she talks about wanting to spread the light, you know, like that's what, ultimately what she's here for. All the other stuff is is nice and is a part of it, you know, but ultimately she's here just to spread joy and love and help help others step into that. Yeah, and I think actually that's the perfect note to end on. I would like to jump right into the conversation with her because I think that is the absolute perfect note. That is what she says. I mean, at the core of it all, it's about spreading the light and we don't need to have conflicts with each other about how to spread the light properly or in the right way or it should be like this. It's all about just doing it and, um, and getting that out to as many people as possible. And she's really made that her mission. It's a wonderful mission to have and she does such a beautiful job with it. She really has. And for anyone who is wanting to, you know, go into a place of more joy and vibrancy, you know, check out some of our, our products on starfamilywisdom.com as well. We have a 28 day raise your vibe challenge. So in, a dis, in addition to some of what Joan offers and, you know, what she can support you with, we've got some great tools that'll help you along that journey as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 days of free affirmations. That's one of my absolute favorites. I mean, we have wonderful free products that you can use to support yourself and to raise your vibe, as Joan talks a yeah. lot about in this review. That's what Jen and I are all about. We want to raise our vibe. We want to help the planet. We want to help ourselves. We're going to help other people. And obviously, you do too, because you're here listening to us. So thanks so much for being here with us, everyone. We really do appreciate it. We love having you here. We love your comments and your questions and your communication with us. Like, like, like subscribe, 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 tell your friends, keep joining us. And we'll see you very soon on the other side with Joan of Angels. Welcome everyone. We are here today with a very special guest, Joan of Angels, aka Dr. Joan Hangarder. And Joan is very special to us at Star Family Wisdom. So we're really excited to have her here and have some fun conversation about her journey and what has led her to become Joan of Angels. Joan uh, is someone that I think of fondly as my fairy godmother, because Joan was part of my coming out party in this community, in this field, in the world of ET contact. And I just really appreciate Joan being part of my journey. And, and we've all been connecting through um, so many fun events and workshops and things in the community. And so today we're, we're going to learn a little bit more about Joan. So Joan, how are you? Welcome. I'm just so excited. I feel like it's my turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited to have and, you. And finding really Jenna forward. was easy. There was an antenna you had and it was like, oh, I want to just work with her. And so it's been really fun to be part of your coming out party. I didn't realize until until recently when I, I sat back and I went, oh yeah, so I'm the one who got her in here. And no wonder we feel so close. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like when Sinead and I met, you know, we had this instant kind of knowing that like, we're supposed to know each other. We're supposed to work together. There are all these synchronistic things happening around the meeting and the same thing happened with us. And, and Joan, I know you've had just tons of experience in the world of, you know, UFO phenomena, ET contact, but you've also been an experiencer of 
angel contact and you've had beautiful downloads and you're you're an artist and you channel and you're a transformation coach. So maybe we can just start with kind of your origin story and how you got here today. So what, what was that journey like? And what, what sounds, got started? It's, it, it's a great question, but as I'm listening to you, it's like, oh my God, so many aspects as we go through our life journey. And so I'll just tell you, I've always followed voices in my life. I have always heard voices. My first memory of contact was when I was a little girl. And in, in that, it, I was carrying around a stone marble statue. It was a, a repeating dream. And years later, I had hypnosis with Yvonne Smith. And it turned out that that was, I was being abducted. You know how they screenshot. So my whole life, I've had a certain amount of contact and also saw angels as a little girl also. And so many instances of my life were pre were preceded by hearing a voice that said, like, go to chiropractic school, you know, move into this ashram, uh, move to LA. So whatever, I but I've always listened. So that's the overriding theme. I became a chiropractor because I heard a voice in a seminar that said, go to chiropractic school. And, and the next day I got a check from my grandfather's estate for the tuition of chiropractic school. So voice confirmation. So I've always led that way. So yeah, I became a healer, but I was also very much of an intuitive. And so that led me to really know that I'm here to heal and inspire, having had a vision younger. So I feel so fortunate that I'm connected. Yeah. But we're here. Oh yeah. So I followed it. I followed it to studying about UFOs and ETs. I ended up researching crash sites in Arizona, having tremendous amount of contact then. And then in 2013, a, a turning point where I heard these voices say 30, pay 33 angels in 30 days. And then I opened up my channeling abilities, my, my abilities to really hear and, and translate. And, and so that is what I've been doing. They told me to paint 33 angels, the angel realms one, and I paint ETs too, but they all want to be seen by humanity. Mm -hmm. So I'm a conduit. I'm a conduit of energy. I'm a conduit of, of healing. I do my Miracle Mondays on healing your body, mind, and spirit. So, you know, it all is encircled, if that helps. Yeah. I'm curious, Joan, like what is the, I mean, you said that when you were a little girl, you started hearing voices and you've always listened to them, which first of all is amazing because so many of us have these opportunities and don't know how to listen to them that early in life or how to consistently listen through life. So first of all, I just want to recognize that you did that, which is quite, you know, it seems like such a small thing, but it isn't at all, right? It, it helps you evolve so much. But when you were a little kid, what is the first memory you have of um, something paranormal or spiritual or that voice coming to you, you know, do you, what's your earliest memory? So, so I always knew there was something special about me. I always knew I was here to do something very big, just, you know, my entire life. But my earliest memory was of seeing angels. So I used to lay in my bed and there was a, some kind of painting, you know, at the foot of my bed. And I didn't see well, I had very bad vision from very young, but as I would look at the painting in, you know, half awake, half asleep, the painting would be alive. Mm -hmm. And so I would find myself inside the painting, you know, walking on these hills and these beautiful beings would talk to me, but I wasn't conscious of what was happening. I only knew that I would try to make it happen and it wouldn't happen. But once in a blue moon, it would happen. You know, and it would happen with my comforter. I would look, stare at my comforter when I was sick and suddenly there were beings, I was in it. So that was really special. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever have any fear around that or was it more just like this curiosity and this, wow, look at look at my world. Like, did you, what was, the, I guess, the, the underlying like feeling or emotion well, around that's that? That's a great question because I always was hoping to have more of that, you know, uh, and I'd lie in bed and I'd squint my eyes and try to make it happen. <laughs> but I was terrified of, of the dark. I, I was terrified to be left alone. When Whitley Strieber's book came out in the mid eighties, I was one of the first people to like 
order my copy. I, I thought the whole world, when I saw that, that gray on the cover of that book, I thought the whole world was going to buy that book. It was like, oh my God. And I read a paragraph in there towards the end that says, well, if you're reading the book, most likely, and I was terrified reading his book. Mm -hmm. And so I realized then that I had had many abduction experiences. I, I have been frozen in terror. I remember that a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and it wasn't until the last, until I was in my fifties, when I had menopause that the night terrors actually stopped, didn't stop until then. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah. It's almost like your body was having some sort of chemical hormonal situation that was helping with the night terror, helping the night terrors come in or helping them happen somehow. I wonder if your body chemistry changing was partially responsible for that stopping. You know, the vibration is different in the body after menopause. Well, there's a lot to speculate. I, I also couldn't have babies anymore, you know, and, and I have a theory that I have a sister who's a hybrid on the ships. And I also have another theory that my son, which I really haven't told him, I'm not gonna let him listen to this yet, that he's also was a hybrid because he was, I think he was a twin. And I was told that I had been a twin and my twin was had disappeared. But you know, wow. when you tune in. Joan, I'm getting I'm getting body chills all over as you're really? talking about that. Wow. It, it, something you said, I just want to kind of backtrack to your experience as a child of having recurring dreams and what you learned about that in your regression. And this is connecting for me personally, because I have had, I had recurring scary dreams as a child and did not get that addressed in my last regression. So that's something I'm going to dig into in my next one. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, when you went through the process of starting to like unpack your childhood and, and think about those early experiences, what led you to exploring that as a potential regression question? Well, so I had two regressions and I'm also going to say one of the other terrors I used to have in my dreams was being chased by rats or people on trains, oh. which is also another symbol. And it's kind of interesting because years later I found out my mother had that also and so did my grandmother oh. and so that gets to genetic you know how it, it's ancestral some of this mm -hmm. all right so i forget what the question was <laughs> about your about your regression and and how you tracked back i guess to childhood and and specifically the recurring dreams and 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 all of the other experiences right like how oh. you unpacked that and what led you know to the exploration in your regression i guess well, you know, I had come back to LA after having spent a year re researching the Kingman UFO crash sites. And the year before having spent a year in Baja, having formed a group Baja Paranormal and having six, you know, saucer clouds that hung out over my house all the time. And so many dreams that they were either on my roof or they were out in the front that, you know, and when you have those clear dreams and you wake up and there's a, there's a ramp going up to the ship and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. That's a lot, a lot of contact. So when I came back to LA, I was very involved in UFO contact and, and I reached out to a lot of people and I had a few paintings I had done and I had two regressions. The first was why Baja, what happened? And the second was, well, you know, what happened in my childhood? I had these dreams. Mm -hmm. So I say, keep, you know, I'm going to probably do more, mm -hmm. but at, you know, now that I'm sort of in a different place about it, but very important to recover those memories. Yeah, yeah. That's when I found out I was shown, I, they took me to a room and the number seven comes out in my mind that had about seven tanks. Mm -hmm. And I was given to understand those were my, my babies, my hybrid children. Wow. And, and just recently someone suggested I try to contact my my sister, mm. my twin sister, and my son's twin. I haven't done it yet because it was just this weekend that, that we talked about it. I haven't even admitted it, you know, if I mean you know what I mean. Yeah. 
you know, we interviewed Geraldina Roscoe a little while ago, and she is somebody well known in the hybrid field, right? And she had mentioned to me, I can't remember, Jenna, if this was during our interview with her or if it was in casual conversation, but she was reminding me slash us that um, it's not uncommon for people who are hybrids or who have the experience with uh, anything related to hybridization, you know, either being a hybrid mother or being a hybrid themselves, whatever it is, um, that you can sometimes recognize other people that, you know, in this dimension out there. <laughs> have you ever had that happen? Have you ever seen anybody else that you knew? When I was out there? Not yeah. yet. Not okay. yet. But what is exciting is I'm going to be interviewing Geraldine next month. And so now I know exactly what we're going to be talking about <laughs> oh, <laughs> in a lot great. of depth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a great tribe. I know, yes. I know, I know. Yeah, so for anyone who hasn't watched that that interview, check that out and check it out when, when Joan interviews her too. Um, great, great conversation around the hybrid program and what we can learn around that. I think for people who are new to this conversation, that's a lot to take in and process, right? This this idea that some of us have been, you know, interacting with ETs on this level and have been participating, you know, you know either against our will or participating, you know, with free will in the program. And um, that's something that, you know, I think is hard for us all to process, right? When uh, when it, it, it hits so deep, right, that we may have been disconnected from these beings with whom we, you know, share a bond. And I'm curious, you know, Joan, how have you processed that? You know, you seem like you you're 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 open and um, you you've integrated this information in, in a way that's helped you be who you are now. But has that been a hard hard process going through that? What what's that been like? Well, it's so interesting because I just shared it again this weekend. I was with Alan Steinfeld and a few other people, and I shared it again, and I didn't realize I haven't completely processed it. Mm -hmm. You know, because just because these are losses you don't feel. But on the other hand, I will say this, I love recognizing hybrids. It's so easy to recognize them. There's an energy I, I, I know and I, and I embrace, tell you the truth, the moment I realized I was extraterrestrial, angelic, ascended master, all in one being form, I was really excited. And as I took, as the name Joan of Angels was given to me and I began to embrace that, I embrace my whole uniqueness that I am not like anyone else here on the planet. I am the one and only, and there's a reason for it. And I have a role just like both of you do, you know? So I, this big thing about, about not being from here is actually our most powerful gift because it gives us the ability to sit back and look down and see what's going on there and, and know that we, we came to serve, not to be lost inside of it. You know, yeah. we came to wake up people to their greatness. And so I think, you know, and I think this is, it was getting really more comfortable. I am much more comfortable with it. You know, I, and I processed it and, you know, I, I have a master's in counseling. I used to do a lot of counseling and coaching with people who had had near death experiences and people who had had, who had been taken, because I think it's all part of our journey and our, and our, you know, we called this in. Yeah, I love that perspective that that zoomed out perspective and really seeing the 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 reason you know for why this is happening and and how all people who are participating either in the starseed program hybrid program both it's all to be of service and to help our world evolve and to help us open you know to right. to the other understanding of our reality and um and I know you you've done a lot of a lot of work around that, obviously, you know, over the years, and you've also become aware of some of the different types of beings you've connected with. So I'd love to, to hear from you about where are you from? What do you know about your, your soul origins, your, your ET origins, you know, where are those civilizations? Um, who are those beings? So I feel like I'm Arcturian. And also part tall white, I have a very strong tall white community. And in 2013, when I went to Neil, Neil Gar's very first live Portal to Ascension conference, I had a dream the night before where all night long these beings surrounded me. They, they look like the tall whites. And when I walked into his conference the next day, there was a table 
uh, Cynthia Crawford, she did these ET sculptures and there was the t there was those beings that had been with me the night before. So I, I have a lifetime connection with the tall whites and one came and visited me about two years ago, informed me they took a saucer ship, like, like, like a taxi or an Uber ship down from the base up there behind the base. They were under, and he kind of pointed out where he was and that they came to visit me. So I'm very connected to the tall whites. He's an ambassador He lived, and I have a statue of him and, and sometimes he will download tremendous amount of information. I'm not tall white, but I'm very much enmeshed in that community. And I've actually seen him with his wife and two kids. There's that, but I feel like my essence is Arcturian. It comes from the wisdom of the elders. I also am connected to the Anunnaki gods must you know, I remember that the grandmother, Anu's mother, the grandmother, Tiamat. So I, I kind of remember these connections. Mm. Joan, I want to ask you something as well, because you're talking about your origins in one kind of way, right? Like we all have our galactic interstellar origins, and then we have our human origins here on Earth. And you were talking about as part of your humanness here on Earth, how you've had to work towards owning your uniqueness, you know, more and more through your life. And I think that's something that many people, if not everyone, can relate to, you know, on some level, because here we are living in this pretty restrictive uh, situation, you know, matrix, whatever you want to call it, where we are supposed to behave a certain way, we're supposed to look a certain way, we're supposed to do certain things. And a lot of us, especially at this time on Earth, right, where there's so much pivotal transform transformational change happening, it seems to be rising more to the obvious, to an obvious level for many of us that we all are unique in our own ways, first of all, which we always knew, but now we're unique in a way that is much more expansive than we thought about before, because the reality of interstellar communication and connection with Earth is becoming more and more so. So I'm curious about how you have made your way through life with that feeling of being this unique person, different from other people, not quite sure where you're going to fit in your life, and then coming into that more and more over the years. What has that been like for you? Because I think most people would say, you know, it's really stressful, it's difficult, you feel like you don't fit in anywhere, but there's also skills and abilities and kind of intuition that can come from that experience as well. So I'm curious what it's been like for you. It's a great question, really good question. So, you know, I've integrated, I've had several, I've had a lot of lifetime to integrate this. And for me, becoming a leader has been the hardest thing, even though my whole destiny is to be a leader. I was very shy. I hid in a closet most of my life as a kid, you know, it was the safest place. And literally sometimes to come out, I literally have to open the closet door and remind myself I'm here to lead. Can't lead from the closet. And sometimes Archangel Michael is in the hallway saying, you can't shut off the, you know, you have to have to go out there. And to anchor that in, a few years ago, I, I had a palm reader, it was in 2015. He said, oh yeah, you know, you were supposed to be famous, right? And my stomach sank. And I said, well, yeah, right. He says, well, you missed it. You blew it. <laughs> and then he said, so now my heart is sinking. It's 120 out and I'm like about to faint. And then he said, well, don't worry, dear, it'll come back, but not quite the same. And that was one of the hardest things for me, Jenna, just so you know, and Sinead, because, oh my God, you know, to miss it. And I knew exactly what he was talking about, exactly, because I had been prophesized since I was 30 that I was here to heal and inspire on big stages and massive numbers of people. But because of my own shyness and fear, I managed to deconstruct my, I'm telling you this for your audience to get it. I wasn't ready. It would have meant like standing up and, and like, you know, really being seen. So I had to, I had to experience lost everything twice because I was afraid. In fact, I used to have a joke when I went to speak. It was like, you know, I lost everything before it was fashionable. Oh. You know? it was my, but, but, you know, when I heard that when I was named Joan of Angels, I'll never forget going to LA with my daughter, meeting her there. And I was really confused. 
I, I will say I was kind of confused. I didn't know how to introduce myself to people. So we were in a shop and, and I decided to introduce myself as Joan of Angels and my daughter, holy moly, she's elbowing me and she's going like this, mom. And then after, do you have to lead with that? Couldn't you be normal for a while? Oh. So couldn't you go with Dr. Joan Angarder till they like knew you, mom? So I'm sharing this with you because there is a lot to be said about claiming that power that goes through you. When you start to know you're speaking with authority, when you're speaking with the voice of, of source coming through you, there's a there's a place where you have to surrender. Mm -hmm. So I'm in that state, Jenna, that about 2020, summer 2020, when I was thinking, oh, I'm the only Joan of Angels on the planet. Isn't that great? They sent me another message. It's the same message for everyone, but it's like, well, Joan, to claim that name, you know, you, you were given that name for a mission, a reason. And if you don't choose to claim it, then we'll give it to someone else, that mission, you know? You see? So that's why we say yes, you know? So it woke me up. So now I don't care what anyone says, okay? Isn't that an, uh, isn't that just a beautiful place to get to after all of the, all of those <laughs> times where you're worried about what are people going to think when I say this thing or I reveal this and then to just be yourself like that must feel so freeing. Do you just feel free and like like you can do anything now because you've gotten to that place? Well, you know, I'm kind of feeling inside me what it's like when I get up on stage now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm Joan of Angels and I claim it. Mm -hmm. And there's like lightning, you know, there's like light. And I've literally had light come through my hands. So, the, so yeah, I'm telling everyone, claim that power within us because that's what we're here for. At Star Family Wisdom, we're here to support your cosmic evolution. And if you want to connect with angels on your own at home, we've got you covered. In our Spiritual Protection and Cleanse course, we help you connect with your guides and your angels, accessing that higher dimensional support system that is always there for you. They want to connect with you and help you, but you have to intentionally connect and slow down. And in the Spiritual Protection and Cleanse course, you'll get a meditation to help you connect with your non-physical team. And you'll be able to download our Archangel Guide, which tells you all about the Archangels, who they are, and how they can support you. So follow the link in the show notes to learn more about the course and start connecting with your angel team today. Yeah, if we're going to be different and go through all that pain of being different and coming to terms with it now, I say celebrate how unique we are because each of our voices, and I have chills saying it, is so important. It's so important. Yeah. This connection to the extraterrestrial star family gives us our ability to be intuitive, psychic, telepathic. All of those gifts come because of the, they expand our awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even, even if someone isn't connected directly to ETs, right? Like we all have our own unique destiny. Everyone has a destiny that they're here for a mission, a purpose. And it is about getting brave and stepping into that, even if it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be, you know, like I'm sure you never in your wildest dreams thought you would become Joan of angels and be painting 33 angels in 30 days. <laughs> I never thought that. But you know what? I always wanted to be Joan of Arc. She was the one I totally, completely identified with. I just, you know, saw 101 past lives with her and really felt I was her. So when this woman, Robin, said, well, I know who you are, you're Joan of, and the room stopped, I thought she was going to say Arc. But now Joan of Arc comes through me. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's really exciting to feel our connection, you know, our connection to our guides, our connection to our star family, and to be able to open up our intuition, to be able to hear the messages and to remember. And so that's what I've dedicated my life to. I, I help people remember who they are, why they're here, their, their mission, their skills. You know, I say, we all come with a tool toolkit, you know, 
a clipboard with everything that we, you know and more in case we get lost <laughs> believe me i've been lost i i know, <laughs> I know. same yeah <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm appreciating that about you, Joan. I mean, I, I saw on your website, by the way, we're going to put all your links and all of the ways that everybody can find you in the show notes. So everyone who's listening, if you want to connect with Joan, look for that at the end of this interview. But I saw on your website, Joan, that you really emphasize um, helping other people come into their power. And I love that because it's one thing for us to come into our own power, but to me, such a big part of doing that is sharing it because it's not just mine you know, it's this collective universal power that we're all utilizing, that we're all sharing, that we're all channeling. There is, you know, a place for everyone to access that. And I really love that you encourage that because so often, you know, Jenna and I've talked about this a couple of times before, I think even on this podcast, that everyone wants to help. Everyone wants to be of service in some way. Well, most people or some people, but in this field, the spiritual field, people are here for a reason. They're here because they feel that call in some way or another. But not everyone knows how to share what they know or how to encourage other people to know the same things, right? To be generous with that. Because we still are human and susceptible to temptations such as power or status or whatever. But you're not about that. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. The groundedness that you're bringing and you know, the fact that you're making it so clear to people that they too can access what you're talking about. They too can have the experience of connecting with others um, that are around us all the time that we can't see with our limited 3D eyeballs, you know, um, but that are around us all the time and want to help us. So can you talk a little bit more about what kind of guidance you've received? You know, you've obviously received so much encouragement and they've given you this name and told you what your purpose is. But what are maybe one or two stories you can share of a time that you received some guidance that really struck you, really moved you or motivated you? What was that like? You know, I suppose, okay, I just asked, which one should I say? So I was in a plant medicine ceremony in 2016. It was two weeks of yoga and plant medicine and tinctures of all kinds. And, and while I was there, there was this one woman I met, I adored her. And I said, do you want an angel activation? Now I'd never done, yeah, you know, I hadn't really done a lot yet of angel activation. She said, yeah. So we're both laying there and I do this angel activation for her. And then, you know, the energy passed and I'm laying there and I'm being transported into this particular painting that I actually had done over Christmas. And it's this red cathedral. And I'm being transported into this cathedral. And the angels there, there were two golden, golden, golden angels on, on the steps. And as I walked up, they turned me around and now I'm dressed just like them. And they said, because you have so generously, you're initiating and awakening the young ones, we are granting you this gift. And so, there I was, you know, in the front of this with these angels, and, and that was my gift that I was able to call them and help them remember and call them into the cathedrals and into remembering who they are and why they're here. And that was one beautiful gift I was given. And that was from the angel realms. But a second beautiful gift I was given was from the star beings, my star family. And I was on the ship and was in that regression. And everyone, all 95 people of my Baja paranormal group were sitting in chairs, sound asleep, like in trance. I'm on the stage and there's a chair in front of me. And I am, I am attuning the antenna of the person who's asleep in front of, in, directly in front of me. It's kind of like the way I used to adjust people chiropractically, but this was a, their antenna. And they said, your job, which you signed up for, which I kind of knew anyway, was to align the vibratory frequency of every human on the planet. And I went, you know, it would confirm what I knew, but then I went, there's 8 billion people on the planet. I kind of shouted it out. Yeah, that's a big job. <laughs> and then they sent two people on the ship. And one is my dear friend, uh, Shima Moore, who, who actually has an astrology panel coming up soon. And the other was a, a man who, named Thunder, who worked with technologies that could that your cell phone could send out around the world for healing and transformation. But my job, which I have already known for 
my lifetime because I would tell as a chiropractor, I would intuitively say, I'm aligning your body, mind, and spirit, or power on. I've just turned on your power. You know, there's an adjustment right here. I'd say, I just turned your power on. I do it in everything I do. I still do it in, in talks or because that's what I'm here to do, turn everyone's power on. I love that. Easy that, peasy. <laughs> that is such a like clear understanding of a mission and purpose like one of the clearest understandings of someone's mission and purpose i've heard someone articulate so i think it's just so beautiful that you've you've gotten to that point joan where you were just crystal clear on like what you're here to do and you did that recently just like two weeks ago with a ufo sighting you were with a group of women and you called in contact like you called in a ufo for the group so um, this is similar to what you were just describing can you talk about this experience i am so glad you asked me about that jenner because it was so empowering so i do i do um workshops and events calling all angels i think there's one on my website even where where people can experience the presence of the angels you know so i i already if they said, can you call the angels? I would have been very confident, you know? Anyway, it was a party and I, and I want to be upfront about it. It was not a spiritual meditation, high frequency, like, you know, you and I might be at, or even what happened when I, when there was that CE5 event, when I was in Sedona and we call them in, we, we meditate, we pray, we chant, whatever. No, it wasn't anything like that. Just so you know, it was, there were a lot of women sitting on the fence up in the balcony. They were, they had been playing rock and roll. They, when they heard there were, there was going to be an, someone was calling aliens. I tried to explain to them, these weren't aliens. These, and I realized at that moment, I was going to be a bridge. So I just got over my fear. She said, can you call in aliens? And I said, these are not aliens. These are our star, fa star family. She said, well, can you call them? Whatever they're called. And I said, yes. And I had a certainty that, well, okay. And so I went out to the center of the field, asked for the music to be turned off. We had an audience kind of watching on the balcony and exactly 12 women showed up in a circle around me. And that was a very significant number. And I, I began to, you know, and I didn't know tech, you know, I just did it. I, the, this is what I'm going to say. The bravest way is to just do it don't question. You just don't question. And I did a process I do every week with my group on Miracle Monday on my show. I put my roots. As, so they told me very clearly that what I had to do is raise our vibration to the vibration of the star beings. So that would involve literally having them out of their body and their vibration as, as high as it could be, as quickly as it could be, because who knew how long I had their attention. Okay. So we sent the roots down the earth. I sent our antennas up to the heaven and I started having them all being pulled out of their body, a thousand feet, 2000 feet, by that, you know, a mile. And I said, but I had began with kind of putting them in a, a quick trance, talking about all the ETs seeing the history of giant rock, which was just over the hill. So it was really a short procedure. And then the next thing I know is I hear a voice that says, look up. And I said to the voice, a little too soon. And it said, look up and open your eyes. And so I shouted out, look up, open your eyes. And we all looked up together. So thank God I didn't question more than once. You know, we all looked up together and it came right out of that mountain where I think the tall whites live. Because I could feel them the whole time. Like, I feel called to that area. Like, my my being sings there. So it came right out of the mountain. And we at first I thought it was a shooting star. But then as it got to like right here, you know, above us right here, I don't, it was a couple of thousand feet maybe, you know, as if you were seeing an airport, an airplane that had taken off. It slowed down, kind of, you know, like vibrated. And then, and then someone said there were gold sparks and then it shot off. And it was really phenomenal. Wow. It was, and I feel, First of all, I experienced a DNA acti activation. They upgraded mo probably several of the women who said yes, especially the women who participated. 
it upgraded them as far as they could go to the next level of consciousness mm. of wanting more wanting to know what happened and so it was it was really good because you know we talk about calling ets but it's usually with our own tribe of people who understand you know you're talking about stephen gray you're talking about protocols you know no this was these people wanted to see aliens so it was an amazing experience it bridged a gap and now they know that it's possible you know it, it is possible and now i know that that which i do i do was really able to connect it was a confirmation for me as well wow that <laughs> that one that's pretty cool that that happened outside of like a formal you know ce5 type of event that you were able to make that happen to connect and get get the sighting to happen and i it just rings so true to me that this was meant to happen for people who haven't had any sort of contact experience for people who are ready to wake up for people who are ready to accept and acknowledge that this is a truth of our reality and it's almost like you're being put in this position as a a guide right to like help people wake up to that and be okay with it is that kind of how you felt about that whole scenario oh, yeah and they wanted to know can we have more teachings with you you know can um one woman followed me around the whole time i would never had a groupie before <laughs> and you know it was really empowering it was empowering for everyone there we all, they all want to know more. And I think that that kind of experience for the general public was really good, you know, and also to get over the fear, the ship, the, the lights were beautiful. They felt good. And, you know, our job is just to be a bridge. Again, all of us who've come down here to, you know, they say, okay, to be one of the chosen ones, you must choose, but we all have a role in waking people up in some way, shape or form. Agreed. It, it's true or to remind them who they are, why they're here. It is our mission. Yeah. It's, you know, no matter what it, it looks like. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to me that like, it seems to me that the general, I want to hear what your thoughts on are on this. It seems to me that the general public um, is rising up to meet us, right? Those of us who are already awake and kind of have a sense of what's really going on and want to share that that population that's not completely awake yet they're actually already rising up to meet us because there's such a thirst for meaning in life right now people are really needing that they're needing more substance more meaning more depth you know more connection more actual genuine connection so it's, it's such an interesting time because there seems to be this parallel you know if i'm going to make a blanket statement and separate us into let's say two groups right there's the awake group and the not yet awake group um, you would think that it's all on us, right, to do this work, and so to speak, right, and, and help to wake people up. But it does seem like this other group is doing their own, is going through their own process where they're able to clear some stuff out of the way, realize that, for example, media is way out of control, social media is dominating our life, and news isn't quite the news anymore. And they're, they're asking new questions, they're having new conversations that are helping their connection to us open up so it's very interesting that's how i'm seeing it happen anyway what are your thoughts on that on this transition that's occurring in those two let's say groups yeah you know there's i have several kind of responses there is a there is you know this timeline that we're on and there has been a timeline split you know where there's less darker energies higher ascension energies but it is my understanding that it will come back together. It has the potential to come back together. So my, my teachings talk about raising our own light frequency so high that it can, you know, just as, um, what, what's his name, David, doc, the doctor who talks about power versus force. And he says that those who are that frequency of the avatars and the light bearers can actually heal and raise the light frequency of, of hundreds of thousands of people around them. And so I operate with that philosophy. My guide said, raise the light vibration of every single human on the planet. Well, I raise it, maybe we raise ours right here today, and it's raising the light of everyone who's around us. And that does, it's like the hundredth monkey. Now we're on the millionth monkey, the, the, the you know trillionth monkey like human you know where's that's how we grow and i think that that is what is happening 
and and there's more you know at some point i think it's very interesting the light workers were also divided you know the light workers were sent down here to hold the light carry the light and really be powerful forces to mitigate some of the dark mm -hmm. but one of the first things i saw happen to be honest is they took out a lot of the light workers and they and they divided the light workers so even the light workers aren't in agreement you know they don't even agree about we're just like can't we just all carry the light right you know, now it's sort of deteriorated yeah. and i feel like that other side mm -hmm. knew what it was doing because it's our light force light worker star seed people who really hold the key to helping to shift the planet i think I agree. That that's such a good reminder for us all that, you know, while we're at this point in our earth history and um, this kind of nadir point almost of our, you know, 26,000 year cycle that occurs on this planet, we're at a point that's really intensely polarized. And that is kind of natural for just where we're at in our evolution. But we all don't want to fall into that, right? We don't want to fall into, you know, being so polarized against each other that we can't come together for the common good because that's what it's all about, right? Like you said, Joan, it's about raising the vibration and coming together to create more harmony and create a better world for everyone. And we can't do that when we're over here, you know, on two, two opposite ends of, of the spectrum. So yeah, I think that's that's a beautiful message, you know, for us all to to sit with and remember. That when we have those, have those differences, it's it's about how do we work together to resolve them. So there's all this talk about raising your vibe and what does that even mean? It's about changing your energy. It's about learning how to manage your energy and cultivating a more positive and uplifting experience of your reality. And it requires shedding heavy energy. And once we've done that, we can become a higher vibe person who can master their reality, can master manifestation, and who will experience more joy and abundance. So if you want to experience more joy, more abundance, and attract better experiences into your life, letting you get rid of all of that stress and anxiety that most people feel, I did for a long time, the 28 day raise your vibe challenge is for you. In this challenge, you'll learn how to integrate healthy routines, develop self-care rituals, find spiritual connection with the world around you, and come away with love for your entire self. Because we want you to become the most empowered person possible, and we want you to build the life that you truly desire. And you can't do that unless you work in the world of energy and implement these practices and routines and ways of living that help you get that vibe up, help you raise that frequency. And in this challenge, you'll receive 28 days of videos along with emails from me encouraging you all along the way. And at the end, you'll have the tools you need to feel lighter and continue shifting energy and raising your vibe. And the best part is that you can try your first week totally free, and then it's only $7 per week for the remaining three weeks. That's less than a dollar per challenge. So if you wanna raise your vibe, if you want to start to experience that life of joy, that life of abundance, and really start to attract the things you desire this is for you. And of course, we always offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you're not 100% happy with the challenge, you're not feeling it, that's cool. We'll offer you a refund. It's totally risk free. All of our products are because we want you to evolve in the way that is best for you. And we want to be your support system on that journey. Yeah, and really so many of the details are just totally irrelevant, right? It's what you said, Joan. Why can't we all just agree to spread the light? It doesn't really matter, you know, which way is the right way to spread the light. It's all about what's coming from your heart and what's coming from your soul. It's not that difficult to tap into that just essence. And, well, it is difficult sometimes depending on where you're at. 
but you know to, to realize that there's a seed that's planted in all of us that are that is here to be shared and that seed is love and kindness wisdom you know all these higher vibrational ways of thinking and being that we're trying to get to and i want to bring it back to you again with regard to fear because you mentioned you just touched on it just mentioned the word fear a few minutes ago and jenna had brought that up earlier in the conversation but I'm curious, you know, in your role as a guide and as someone who's really trying to help other people around you, how do you tell people, you know, this is how you can move through your fear. This is how you can let go of it. This is how you can transform it. What kind of advice do you give people about fear? Because it is such a state of being right now and always on this planet, it seems. You know, when you can see things from the bigger picture, you see the movie you created, the whole story. It's, it's easier to move through a lot of things. So my standard really in, in a lot of my coaching and my readings and stuff, I like to bring people with me. Sometimes I'm sitting in a mountaintop, almost at the top. There's a cute little cave. I've made it very beautiful. And we have our tea over here and we can see the whole spectrum down below. And I see it as a beautiful path, but there's a road jam here. And that road jam could be your fears. It could be your argumentative state it could be your lack of knowing or your health whatever your log jam is we get to see it from up above we get to look at all the good things it brings you even if it looked like it was you know like oh, i did you know I was, i'm teaching this class and and one of the women is blind and she said my blindness got me to like say no to a lot of things you know it got me to opt out it got me to you know protected me so we get to sit here and go okay you know, what does your fear, what is your fear protecting? And we could see it, you know, we can break it down because, you know, fear, what is fear except an illusion. And it's also excitement turned inside out. It's a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. But once you can see the big picture that, that that fear is perfect to stop you and, and it's stopping you from usually doing the biggest thing you ever have thought of in your life, it becomes easier to dissolve the fear once you get that. Mm -hmm. so you sitting can, up you know, in my little mountaintop helps oh i'm sure it does i'm sure it does do you give people even like small things to do you know that they do independently outside of guidance with you or outside of sessions with you you know well in your daily life a lot of things we do talk about in daily life you know but a, a lot of things get down to how do you how do you maintain your frequency how do you start to to use discernment and eliminate those things that are keeping you in fear or those people who are talking at you. How do you recognize? I call them miracle busters or miracle buddies. You know, how do you recognize them? So, or, you know, a process that I've been doing in my class, what is your life purpose? This process that yes, last time everyone loved, it was really, we got to wear all of our negative, you know, all of our difficult challenges, like our, I had everyone with yellow stickies all over them. You know, your fears, your anxiety, your wow. all your neuroses for all of us to see. So we could see how they just, they're pretty funny when you really think about it and you convert them into the positive. Mm -hmm. So I think those are things I do instinctively with people. I love, I love that. It sounds like a fun sounds like a fun approach too. It's not not just about about the, the the heavy stuff, but you're you're bringing some some lightness, some levity to how you how you move through that with people, which I love and I, I think that that's another good reminder for us. Are we surrounding ourselves with miracle busters or miracle buddies? <laughs> right? No, and it's it's a great word to really, you know, like like you get a download yeah. Like, you know, Jenna, your, your star family wisdom, and then you tell someone who's more like a muggle kind of person, and they go, that's impossible. You will never do it. They're going to think you're crazy. I think you're crazy. And then you go home, you, you know, you're like a mess because it seems like such a brilliant idea. And then the, everyone else around you shoots it down. And some people never recover from that. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a long time to like trust that, that star family wisdom. Yes. Joan of Angels. Yes. Mm -hmm. So learning to trust your own inner voice is, is the key. Yeah. It's a lot of practice. It really is. And this leads me, Jenna, if it's okay with you, I have another question for Joan. I'm being a little greedy right now, but go for it. Thank you. Because well, I'm getting to know you, Joan, for the first time. Jenna's had her time with you. She doesn't exactly. Right 
<laughs> well, actually, I'm always interviewing Jenna. So this is actually really a treat. Yeah, spotlight on Joan. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, I'll sit, I'll sit back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. He is involved as you like. This is us hanging out with Joan. But um, Joan, you were mentioning you were mentioning surrender, and um, surrender is one of my absolute favorite things to think about, meditate on, work on, talk about. I absolutely, I think it is so incredibly important on a, on anyone's spiritual journey to be able to be vulnerable or to surrender, whatever word you want to use. So how how have you experienced surrender, and how do you talk about that to other people? I'm I'm mostly interested in your personal experience with it. You know, what has been your journey with being able to surrender more and more? But then also, how do, you, how do you tell the people that you're working with that you're helping about surrender? Well, I just, you know, when you said that, I was going to say, you know, I think they had a hammer. <laughs> they had to knock it into me. So <laughs> I, I, I remember once in a, I think I was in a plant medicine journey. So in around 2013, I was such a mess that I began plant medicine work to recover. And I was having a conversation with Anu, who was the, the king of the, of the Anunnaki, um, the father of Enlil and Enki. And I'm having a conversation with him. And I said, I can't help questioning. I will never stop questioning. And I, will, and I cannot ever give an automatic answer, yes, without my question. And I remember saying this to him and having this feeling that that was what was responsible for many of my years of suffering was that I I couldn't say yes, I, I needed to know why. And I'm still that way. I still have this immense curiosity. I have to know why. So if you're gonna tell me to jump, you, I need to know where, what, and when. Mm -hmm. So I'm laughing about the question because I have surrendered, but not in a traditional way. So he and I came to an agreement that my questioning was right and proper, and I was no longer gonna be punished for the act of questioning. You know, I'm, I am a spiritual rebel. I always have been, you know, you tell, I, I ran away at the age of three, just, you know, I ran up to the roof and disappeared for hours till they found me. So I actually was passively aggressively a rebel. So that gets back to this. How do I teach people how to surrender? You know, if you if you need to surrender, we get there, but but we have we get there in a in a different way. It's probably not your traditional one, way. What is the traditional way that you're thinking about? Just so the audience has a sense of what you mean by that. Well, you know, through prayer and meditation and sitting uh -huh. still, um, we can go inside and and some of the answers come, and we can. Hear, I kind of can hear it on the run, you know. I I I can hear it. I, I can just, you know, I hear it and, and I say yes. Like I, I just, I hear it and I say yes. I don't actually call it surrendering though. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, they paint 33 angels. After I said no three times, I said yes. Because <laughs> then it. the knowingness came. Yeah. You know, got it, got it. Okay. Well, you do, you can't surrender before you're ready. That's for sure. Yeah. But, but I try to say yes as soon as I can now because, and I have been trained. I, they trained me that saying yes faster works better mm. because then actually, you know, I did get that, those tests that if I, like a few years ago, when I didn't say yes, I could have been famous a long time ago, <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> had I said yes years ago. So they, they trained me the school of hard knocks. Right. So now, you know, when I get a download to do something like call Jenna to be on the show, I picked up the phone instantly and I do it. That that's how I've been trained, but I've been trained because of the hard knocks. Mm. I'm not. Take some of that, that sometimes. Uh, it's it's not easy to trust, you know, when we're when we're in this this dimension and you know so much of that guidance is invisible to us. Some people can see it, some people can't, you know, it's a lot of us haven't been taught to trust guidance that comes from somewhere else so that's big like i've been through that you know not not wanting to trust it and kind of pushing it away until finally you know there's like the wake up call Sinead, you talk about getting the cosmic frying pan on the head you know right. it's like sometimes we need those moments to be be like okay fine i, I trust i surrender <laughs> 
-hmm. We do, we do. And, you know, I teach a class, an intuition class, and in it, I really, one of the biggest takeaways is start writing down all the times you did not listen to that voice within. Mm -hmm. And that is the eye opener. In fact, that's probably a big takeaway because when you look at all the times you didn't listen, including that time I could have been famous, right? Obviously, I wasn't ready, but those times we didn't listen. And my journal of all the times I didn't listen has been so painful. And even recent, you know, little times I, you know, I had a hit to do it, but I didn't. And, and then it became a mess. So that's how we get trained yeah. by paying attention. Yeah. But, you know, it is interesting because our gut screams for attention and we do need to learn that it's accurate. Mm -hmm. And we do need to train ourselves. This is true stay for medical doctors. Mm -hmm. Someone told me a story just recently, the shadow people. Yeah, it was an interview I did. And he was talking about, about this, this kid who was very, very connected to, and here's heard the voice of his guides and, and saw the shadow people and he was having cancer treatments. And the doctor was saying, well, you know, what we've been doing hasn't really worked. And then, and then the, my, my, a person, the guy I'm interviewing, Mike said, and then the doctor looked up like this in, in the consult, like he was listening and he came back and he said, oh, well, let's try a new way. As if the doctor was listening to a download mm -hmm. and be, now being convinced that it was the boy's guides that were waking up the doctor to listen. Wow. And they saved his life. I do well, not. you know, it, it is really interesting. Like there, there's so much stigma about around talking about these things and how we talk about them. And you had said almost at the beginning of our interview, Joan, you had said, I've always heard voices, right? Now phrasing it like that, we're not supposed to phrase it like that, right? Because that immediately makes people go, uh oh, she's schizophrenic or she's this or she's that. People don't know, as Janet was mentioning, how to trust that experience and how to discern, but how to tell the difference when maybe you are in a state of paranoia or anxiety and then that needs to be healed, you know, that needs to be addressed, sure. But maybe you're not. Maybe you're experiencing communication and guidance and support and that needs to be looked at and, and addressed as well. So it just seems like there are these stigmas, you know, these blanket statements that are put over these experiences. And yet, even in the medical field, as we're discovering more and more and more these days, because there's so much exciting information that's finally starting to come to the fore these days, uh, the medical field is starting to catch on about things like NDEs and, you know, the fact that life after death is a very real, they say, possibility. We know it's true. But so many medical doctors and nurses and people in the medical field who are, you know, you would think of them as being firmly in the 3D. They've gone through medical school. They're hugely left brain. But there's so many unusual experiences that occur in hospitals that are witnessed by medical people who then are not able to talk about it right? It's unprofessional. It makes them look kooky. They're going to lose credibility, but they have these stories and they're out there and they're documented. So what you're saying about that is really fascinating. We really be, do need to look beyond the surface of what we normally experience, go a little deeper into asking questions or maybe getting to know people. And we find out that this information is out there. People are having these experiences. So the kinds of people that you're working with, are any of them in the medical field, in the academic field, really left brain people that you're having to help move over into a different mind frame, a different way of perceiving life? So most of my clients, you know, have already realized something else is going on or they'd be, some of them are afraid of Joan of Angels, except for this one Marine. So actually that's not a blanket statement because I did do an event one night here calling all angels. There was one man here, he was a Marine. And well, he was like, going, I don't even know why I'm here. And you could tell there was a little, you know, all women calling all angels. And he's sitting there and at the end of the night, it turned out that he relived an experience in the war in Vietnam War where everyone in his troop died except for him. And he actually saw that he said there was an angel and he connected with that angel. And we're all in tears as he's reporting that story. So, so you know, I'm not even... I, that was very powerful to me. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of stories of, of ways of, of people who didn't even know. I believe everyone has been connected. Everyone has been contacted. It's a matter of actually learning to trust, 
learning to open up the curtain, taking classes so you can learn to hear, learn to trust. And we, because I actually believe humanity's moved into more of this, of this ability to hear, but our lifestyle turns it off. You know, right. you can be too busy to listen. You could be too hyped up on coffee to, to get what you're feeling, you know, or if you're, if your stomach, your gut is hurting you, that could be a message to stop what you're doing. But then again, maybe you should, it's kind of crazy. People are, are running away from the messages. And, and so one of my, my messages is to people is, is, you know, to slow down so you can start hearing. If you don't know who you are, if you're wondering why you're here and what your purpose is, then it's time to slow down so you can start to, you know, hear because you do know. It's just a matter of accessing it. We all have this ability. That's why they call us Hugh man, God man. Yeah, we can all tap into our, our connection with source. We all are source. We've all, all got this, this connection with the higher realms and every human can tap into their connection with, with guides and angels. Everyone has them. Like, like you said, Joan, it's just a matter of, of getting there. And I'm just, I'm so, so grateful that you support people in that, because I think, you know, like what Sinead was saying around how there's so many of these experiences happening out there that people just don't talk about because they're afraid of being called crazy or it looks unprofessional or whatever it is. But we need to talk about this. We need to talk about these experiences and, and, and have these sorts of conversations and, and help people open up to that and, and shed some fear around it because it can be a really, really beautiful part of our life experience when we tap into it. So Joan, thank you so much for sharing yourself and your gifts and your guidance with our audience today. I want to make sure everyone knows where they can connect with you, how they can work with you, how they can find you. Uh, like Sinead said, we'll have links in, in the show notes, but please share with the audience how they can get in touch with you. So you can hop on my website, www.joanofangels.com. Everything's Joan of Angels. And on my website, you can get a free ebook, How to Live Your Soulful Purpose, which is, I think, a good start. And so you can come to my website every Monday. I do Miracle Monday. You can catch it on YouTube or on Facebook. So Joan of Angels, my YouTube channel is Joan of Angels. My Telegram channel is Joan of Angels. Instagram is Joan of Angels. And I think I do it that way. And I'm the only Joan of Angels. So at this moment of time. So the one and only, the one and only, one and, only. <laughs> and yes, we are the one and only Joan of angels, not Joan of Arc, Joan of angels. Oh, and wow. So I'd love for you to connect with me and tell me that you saw me on this show. That would be lovely. We'd love to hear that. Too. And, and I help want. people remember. Yes. Oh, so I, I help you. I'm here to help you remember why you took this perilous and confusing journey down here on the planet and how you can actually turn this into the most blissful joy-filled experience of your life really doing what you came here to do just has you off the chart with bliss and happiness and joy mm -hmm. so that's what yeah. i like to do and knowing how to transform struggles and challenges into more of that, the, the joy and the possibilities and the lessons. Thank you so much, Joan, for being with us today and sharing your wisdom. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Got a little greedy with my questions. So thank you, Jenna, for letting me pop in there. Um, and thank you, everyone, for listening. We always really love to have you along. We're so enjoying sharing with you, our, com our community, our listeners. We really, really appreciate your support. And uh, by all means, reach out. Let us know that you saw Joan today on our show. Any comments or questions that you have? Anything you'd like to see more of? Like, like, like. I'm going to do it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yes, accurately three times. <laughs> And, uh, yes. and look us up. <laughs> I try to do it. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but I'm practicing. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, Joan. Really a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here and for all the amazing work that you do. Bye.